Uh, Kenyatta, some of the 60,000 European settlers here are frightened that their titles to land and their right to stay in Kenya may be thrown overboard when a Kenyan administration takes over. Well, and I don't think they have anything to fear, pro providing that they behave as a good citizen. Have you found that since independence things have gone as uh, badly as you expected or better than you expected? Oh, they've gone better than I expected. On the whole, since independence, have things gone better or worse than you expected? Oh, far better. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are watching from. Today's video, we are diving in the story of Jomo Kenyatta and the unending accusation that he sold the country of Kenya to the white people. Jomo Kenyatta was born in a small village in Gatundu around 1897. He was a member of Kikuyu ethnic group, the largest ethnic community in Kenya. Kenyatta received his early education at the mission school. He later attended the Church of Scotland Mission at Dogoto, where he trained as a teacher. He moved to Nairobi, the capital city, and took various jobs, including a clerk, before becoming involved in in politics. In 1920s, Jomo Kenyatta joined the Kikuyu Central Association KCA, a political organization advocating for land rights and freedom from British rule. He became the association general secretary and started speaking out against the injustice faced by Kenyans under colonial rule. In 1929, Kenyatta went to London as a representative of KCA to present the grievance of his people to the British government. He spent 15 years in Europe studying at various institutions including the London School of Economics and engaging with African and Caribbean intellectuals. During this time, he published the famous book Facing Mount Kenya, 1938, which explored Kikuyu traditions and urged for the value of African culture and independence. Kenyatta returned to Kenya in 1946 and became the leader of the Kenya African Union, KAU, a nationalist party that sought independence through peaceful means. By the early 1950s, tension in Kenya had escalated. The Mau Mau uprising in 1952, a rebellion by Kikuyu fighters against colonial rule, led by the British to declare state of emergency. Kenyatta though not directly linked to the Mau Mau, was arrested in 1952 and accused of leading the movement. He was sentenced to seven years in prison and remained in detention until 1959. Kenyatta was released from detention in 1959 but remained under house arrest until 1961. Upon his release, he quickly emerged as the unified leader of the independence movement. He became the president of newly formed Kenya African Union, KANU, and led the negotiation for independence. On 12 December 1963, Kenya gained independence from British rule and Kenyatta became the country's first prime minister. The following year, Kenya became a republic and Kenyatta became first president. After becoming the president of Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta was accused of selling the country to the whites due to the policies and laws he put to the country of Kenya. After Jomo Kenyatta became president, is often accused of selling Kenya in a metaphorical sense. This accusation revolved around how he managed post-independence Kenya, particularly in relation to land distribution, economic policies, and political strategies. Many Africans who were loyal to the government during the emergency are fearful of what would happen to them if you were released. Are there any grounds for those fears? There's no ground at all. Neither those who were in the forest nor those who were royal or home guard have anything to fear at all because I think uh, all of them are brothers and sisters. Let's dive in the controversial of Jomo Kenyatta selling out Kenya. During British colonial rule, a significant amount of fertile land was seized from indigenous Kenyans and allocated to white settlers. At independence, 
there was hope that this land would be returned to the original owners. However, Kenyatta's government implemented a willing buyer, willing seller policy which essentially required Kenyans to buy back the land from the settlers. Instead of facilitating land redistribution to the landless, Kenyatta's government prioritized giving land to the political elites, his close allies and family members. As a result, large tracts of land ended up in the hands of a few, leaving many landless Kenyans disappointed and fostering long-standing social economic inequalities. Kenyatta is criticized for maintaining close ties with the former colonial powers, especially the British, and for adapting capitalist economic policies that favored the statu quo. This helped perpetuate the influence of foreign capital and a small Kenyan elite while limiting broader economic benefits for the majority. His administration is also blamed for fostering a neo-colonial economic structure whereby foreign corporations maintained control over key sectors, thus limiting Kenya's economic sovereignty. After independence, Kenyatta regime shifted away from the promises of democratic governance and national unity. By the late 1960s, opposition parties were systematically eliminated and Kenya became a de facto one-party state. Kenyatta is accused of perpetuating ethnic favoritism, particularly benefiting his Kikuyu community and using state power to suppress dissent. This centralization of power further entrenched the control of resources and political influence among a small elite. Kenyatta and his close associates were often accused of corruption, self-enrichment, and using state power to accumulate wealth. This includes acquiring land and other resources in a manner that some viewed as a betraying and anti-colonial struggle. This perspective that Kenyatta sold Kenya stems from the belief that he and his inner cycle co-opted the independence movement for their own gain, sidelining the aspiration of a broader population, while his leadership laid the foundation for the modern Kenyan state, the long-term consequences and his policies are still felt today in issues related to land ownership, ethnic tension, and socio-economic inequalities. Kenyatta has been accused to be a sellout of the country of Kenya with a lot of atrocities that happened during the colonial period. After Jomo Kenyatta being president, the atrocity continued. The land that were to be returned to the people of Kenya were not returned back. Instead, initiated the policies of willing buyer selling buyer this is the end of the story tell me what you think on the comment section this is the african way